Good morning. My name is Nancy Hetker. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator located in Melbourne, Australia. And I'm coming today with a redubbed version of my online uh, video because I didn't have the sound recording. I don't know why. Um, but here I'm just showing you our new uh, mini catalog and celebration brochure that are available. And if you're in Australia and aren't working with a demonstrator, I am happy to send you your own copies. Just send me a note at nancy at nancysniftynotes.com or put a comment uh, on this video and I will send one out to you. There's all kinds of great things. Um, unfortunately, I'm pointing out there are some things that are not yet available in Australia, but they will be supposedly by the middle of the month. So um, I'm just savoring the anticipation for a bit longer um, for both both in the mini catalog and celebration is what I'm trying to show you here. And um, yeah. I have never tried redubbing a video, so bear with me. We will get through it. Um, obviously, I'm not saying exactly what I was on the video, but I will try to capture everything as it goes by. Um, yeah, I'm showing you my, my dirty, dirty <laughs> grid paper because we're about to get it dirty again um, because we are going to be doing some ombre cards using this Timeless Tiles stamp set. This is again out of this new mini catalog. Um, and I think I'm about to show you how I have it mounted up here on my Stamparatus. Yes, there it is on the Stamparatus. Um, and we do have this big block um, that would fit it, but I find it kind of hard to handle, and especially this one because it's got such straight, straight lines, and I want it to be straight on my cardstock, it's much easier to do it with the Stamparatus. Um, yep, yeah, that's exactly what I just said <laughs> in, in real time. So there's my cardstock. I can get it perfectly aligned there. I know I'm going to cut off the top there because it's a little bit longer than the than the image itself, but that's okay. That's easy to do afterwards. And um, why did I stop? Oh, because I wanted to show you the card that we're making. There we go. That's one that I did with um, some blues. And it's ombre, you can see it goes lighter to darker. And I did that with uh, Pool Party, Coastal Cabana, and B Bermuda Bay inks. Um, and then I decided I wanted, oh yeah, I used uh, blending brushes. That's what I'm explaining there. And a thin black mat. And then I cut out from the um, Perfect Plants dies. I cut out the black to be silhouetted and it's either kind of a stained glass or the sky coming through in the back um, anyhow I just thought it was thought it was pretty that way so I thought we would do a couple more colorways um, and I could make this into like a gift set of three cards so Lining that up, and I'm going to ink in Memento. And get it nicely covered there. And I do really like it. It's nicely lined up, and I can just press all over and get a nice impression and it stayed in place oh I missed some spots so 
see what's going on right there. I can push some more right there. And voila, perfect. Yay. And, oh, I think I'm going to try to show you how nice and even it is, nice and straight. And I will cut that edge off. But first, I'm going to, I've got two of them because I want to do two more colors, two more cards. So I'm going to do it again while we've got it all set up right there. You may notice I've got the, um, the case from the stamp underneath the, um, the plate of the Stamparatus, I think that's a great way to support it and have it just be very flat and even and easy to work with. It's just the right height. Stamp pad also works, but the that's even better. Again, rubbing all over, need to get good even coverage. I know that one spot is a little bit of a problem, so i sure to push there. And, yep, I'd gotten a little blort of ink, but we'll deal with that. So we'll set that aside. And I think, I, yep, there we go. I brought in my little guillotine cutter. I'm going to trim off that extra bit there. go and oh I think I'm going to get some black cardstock because I don't have the mats cut I did have some things pre-done yeah there we go there's my paper trimmer I'm getting my basic size. I know I'm going to have to trim it down a little bit because my because I cut down that that end. So um, I think I've gotten my width just right, and I'm going to come back in in a moment and trim down the. the ends again. And this time I'm just eyeballing it. But if you're working in in metric when I'm doing <clears throat> excuse me, when I'm doing these um these very thin mats it's about two and a half millimeters bigger than the the layer that I'm trying to mat. So you have to have <laughs> you have to have good eyes or good bifocals or <laughs> or good readers to be able to see that on the cutter. But it's it's worth it to get that very nice thin thin mat. So I'm showing you, I did some, um, some swatches yesterday to figure out which colors I wanted to use because um, I know what I thought I wanted to use and then in reality I wound up swapping out a couple of the colors. But here I'm showing you, I'm doing So Saffron for the lightest, Daffodil Delight for the mid-tone, and I picked out um, Bumblebee from my swatch to use for the darkest one. Um, and I'm starting with the lightest one, so saffron. And I'm using our blending brushes and I just swirl on the color and then I swirl starting on the, um, 
starting on the grid paper, but I am looking because this is the one that's got that little ink blot and I'm trying to figure out whether it matters which end I do to be able to cover it up with, um, with my die cuts. Um, but I realize that it doesn't matter which orientation it is. If I do the same layout I've been doing, it, it won't be covered by the, the layouts. Oh, so I'm just showing that the, the, the blending brushes, the bristles are really, really soft, but they're packed really, really densely. So it makes a nice, nice medium for, for blending. And, um, yeah, so I just keep going over and over it to um, get the coverage of ink that I want. And I'm doing two rows of each color. Um, and since I'm starting with the lightest color, I can go really just over the, the edge of that first two rows um, to make sure I've got full coverage. And then I will... Um, it's fine because it's, it's going to get the darker ink on there. And I'm bringing that in from the side. And you can see as I'm doing this, because um, I'm starting on the left side, the ink is, is darker on the left side. I don't know, am I about to swap the paper around? No, I'm just starting on the right side to bring in, and you can see that darkened up that right side. This is interesting. You'll have to let me know what you think about this overdubbing versus <laughs> narrating as I go. And enough of the Daffodil Delight, and we move on to the Bumblebee. And I didn't label them on my swatch, which I probably should have, but I knew as soon as I picked out what I wanted, I just pulled it, and so I didn't, I didn't bother to mark it. But I did my swatches with um, sponge daubers instead of the blending brush. I just wanted little streaks and as I go here I'm discovering that in the end doing it with the brushes I get a, a slightly different result so you see in a minute here I give up on the bumblebee and I keep trying here <laughs> but I wind up giving up on the bumblebee and switching to the crush curry you'll see that in a minute Because right now the the daffodil delight is definitely coming out darker than the bumblebee or a deeper tone I keep trying I don't know if I need more ink on the bumblebee pad to get more of what I want but it works out in the end Swirling, swirling. There we go. I think I'm finally happy. Yes. Okay. What do you think? I think we got the ombre effect there. So I'm gonna set that one aside. And at some point here, I explained that it's pretty humid today, so my fingers feel 
kind of sticky. I keep trying to figure out if I've got actual ink on them or not. And I've turned my grid paper around because um, the blue I had done yesterday and it was, I knew it was totally dry, but the, the yellow is still a bit wet and I didn't want to pick any of it up with the, with the pink tone. So um, I've got Blushing Bride, Calypso Coral, oh no, Flirty Flamingo, and then Calypso Coral for my three pink tones. And I've got a clean brush and the Blushing Bride, and I'm going to swirl that on. And here's a blessing for you not having the <laughs> the original audio. My um my bracelet keeps clanking against the handle of the blending brush, so I push it up out of the way. It's, it doesn't bother me, but I keep feeling like it's gonna bother you guys, so I am aware of it. And yep, on to the flirty flamingo. This is fun. This is nice for building up the color and Ah, yes. Here's where I talk about flipping the paper around since I've come on from the left usually and it makes it easier to just flip the paper around. And again, you can see how coming on from the other side, it darkens up that side. And blending right there where they overlap. Gets a nice ombre in there. Just getting it all the way up to that line and over a little bit. Yep, two, two, two. A little more. Okay. And now for the Calypso Coral. I'm not quite sure why on the pink I decided I needed to wipe the brush because really we're we're just going deeper tones. You don't really need to do that. You saw on the yellow one, I didn't do that. So sometimes, ah, and there I just went from the right side instead of flipping the paper around. Either way works, whatever you're more comfortable with. But you can see on the left side and the right side, I've got two darker blotches and now I'm gonna work on, yeah, I'm gonna work on evening it out. So I'm coming in from, ah, there we go. I can see here. Yeah, I'm just gonna even that all out a little bit more. Once more, okay. There we go. Yep. I like that ombre effect. Again, I don't know why with these I became obsessed with brushing it off, but there we go. So what I'm going to do with those brushes actually is um, I've got a container of water that I soak my um, dirty chamois in and I just soak the um, soak the blending brushes in them in it too when I'm done. It's just water 
and then I rinse them out really well and let them air dry. Um, and the, the bristles are white, so they are a bit stained, um, but that's okay. I sort of keep them within the same color family, even though they don't, once, once they're soaked and dried, they, they don't have color in them anymore. They're just stained. So I turned my paper over so that we can just see what we're actually doing. And I'm off getting card bases now, since I didn't have that prepped in advance, but I'll be back momentarily with those. There we go, that's a Calypso Coral base with my black mat. Yep, I'm gonna like that. So there are my pieces. And some point here I'm going to point out I have when I cut them out I did put um, adhesive sheet on the back and uh, especially for that macrame hanger because it's so thin it's much easier to work with it with the um, adhesive sheet on the back than than little dots of glue although you can oh this is where I find out that there's no sound um, somebody tells me that. So I take a minute here to to figure out what's going on. I'm typing her a message to say, really, you can't hear me at all? And she says, no, there's, it's just static. So I did figure out why, and I will not, <laughs> I will do my best not to ever do that again. This is the first time. Um, my phone was still connected by Bluetooth to some um, headphones in my bedroom. And um, yeah, that blocked out the mic not happy so um, I decide I'm gonna keep going and we'll figure out the sound thing in post-production <laughs> like now that's why I'm doing this overdubbing so there's the one that I made yesterday so I'm gonna do the same thing again today ah, yeah there I'm showing you the adhesive sheet on the back um, all the other pieces, it doesn't really matter whether you decide to do glue or snail, well, not snail, but seal or um, adhesive sheet. Since I was doing stuff with adhesive sheet, it was just fast and easy to just cut everything on the same big piece of cardstock with the adhesive sheet on the back, so that's what I did. Um, yeah, getting everything just laid on there. Yeah, that one, it, in the end, I wish the um, leaves were up a little bit higher, but it's okay. They're all individual. Ah, uh, yes, I'm going to put the baker's twine through that hanging loop there. This is our, what do we call it? Oh, let's see. Baker's twine essentials, and it comes in crumb cake, white, black, gray granite, and vanilla. Two, three, four, so five colors, actually. Um, useful stuff. Yeah, I, at first when I was making the, the blue one, I thought about just putting it on there without the string, but it's weird to have a plant hanger just floating there in space. So, um, removing the bottom part of the adhesive backing sheet and I'm going to stick the pot in there. And then the plant
yep, I just sort of weave it back behind the hanger. And pull the backing all the way off. And put it where I want it. And then my favorite way to stick down strings and ribbons on the back, a little piece of sticky tape. Make sure that adhesive sheet is stuck down well. Oh, yeah. I don't know, sometimes you get bottles of glue that they just don't, it's not clogged, it just doesn't want to flow very well. <laughs> and it's at the end of it anyway, so in a minute I'm gonna go grab a different one. But. I try and try and try, and this one winds up, I had it and then I missed it. I think I'm still thinking a lot about why the sound isn't working and how I'm going to compensate for that. Yeah, that wound up not as straight as I wanted. But you'll see in the end, it all works fine. That's how you know it's handmade, right? There we go. That's how glue should work. Still looking at that crooked, <laughs> crooked placement. You see, I got glue on my finger. Let's get rid of that. There we go. And now with the yellow, I have to figure out which which one I want as the background. I think the daffodil do the light is too light. That I think it's crushed curry. And it's really hard to see a difference with with bumblebee and crushed curry, but there is a slight difference and I go with the crushed curry. And if I'm going to use one card base, I'll use another one eventually. So I just go ahead and cut it into two. Start by scoring in half and then cutting. burnish that fold. For one thing, it makes it lie really flat when I'm placing my layers so I can get, get them evenly. And I'm noticing that I need a new blade on my trimmer because I've got a bit of a raggedy cut. The damp weather we're having today, I think it lends that, makes the paper softer and, and I tend to have that problem a little more, but I also know that it's been it's been kind of ragged for a couple days. So once again, getting the string for the macrame hanger, or as the British and many Australians say, macrame. And this time I'm going to, rever well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to see, can I cover up that little ink splotch? Yeah, no, because that's going to be off the edge. So I have to move it over and it's still there. Oh, so what do I want to do? Keep it on that side. Is it more noticeable with the plant right there? Mm. 
decisions, decisions. If I put it like all the others. Oh, I think that stands out more. So, yeah, I think we'll do it this way just to, I think it stands out less when it's right next to the plant. So we'll do that. sure that leaf is all the way on not hanging off the edge there on the left and the pot Hello? What am I doing now? I'm explaining something. I don't know what. <laughs> Again, peeling the bottom half of the backing to put the pot on the holder. rest of the backing off. Weave that through. Oh, but wait. I need to take the backing off. Pull the backing off. That would be good. There we go. I am going to try to be a little more conscious of keeping things in the frame. There we go. Now we'll add that on. Go, a little bit of sticky tape. This one I managed to get straight. And then uh, sometimes, especially because the um, adhesive sheet wasn't sticking as well as I wanted, a little bit of burnishing there just gets a good even pressure everywhere. And now we'll get that on the card base.
And there we go. There's all three of them. I think that makes a pretty nice little set there. And then I'm gonna show you what I did inside. I didn't want it to be this big blast of white because um, I'd done, you know, I've covered everything with color. So I just took the lightest tone of blue there, which is the pool party, and put it as a layer. It's still light enough to write on. Um, and I'll do the same thing on, on the blog post. You'll see I've got a picture. I've got Blushing Bride and So Saffron layers on the inside of the other two. So that's what I made for you this week. Um, again, if you want a copy of the catalogs and you're in Australia and you're not working with another demonstrator, send me a note, nancy at nancysniftynotes.com. There we go. I'm showing them to you again. If you don't have those, I'm happy to send them to you. There's lots of great stuff available right now. More coming. There's nancysniftynotes.com. Um, more coming in a couple weeks, uh, but everything that I've shown you is available now. Otherwise, I wouldn't have it. And um, yeah, I hope you'll join me again next week. Same time, same place. Audio working, hopefully. Um, yeah. Thanks. See you next time. Bye-bye.